to like, do that. Like, who are some people that are making you laugh these days? And I'm not just talking about women. Like, what what's comedy in general recently that's making you go like, yeah, this is this is good. Hmm. Kind of oops on the spot. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I love. I don't know. I mean, I really respect and admire Tina Fey. Uh huh. Um, because I, I also think she's. It's almost like she started in the mail room. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. We've all watched her. Yeah. Sort of, in, at least in the comedy community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, going from just being sort of like this, this funny writer that you didn't really see yeah. into being a pinup girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and. It's still just as smart, if not smarter. It's still just as funny, if not funnier. Mm -hmm. And get the respect she, you know, deserves and stuff like that. So I really admire her. Um, I mean, I'm I'm sort of old school. I mean, I, I still love Lily Tomlin. Yeah. Um, and I remember as a kid watching, you know, Whoopi Goldberg and being like, what? You know, I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't know that existed. I didn't know yeah. that you could do what she was doing. And it was kind of weird, and but it was funny. And... Mm -hmm. She was a woman, but she was... I remember my first improv teacher. Yeah. I remember, like, being blown away. That I was like, wait, she's a mom? And she... Like, she wore goofy, like, cherry earrings, and she was short and cute and sassy and, and smart and, like, really independent and left-wing, and she had two kids, but she taught improv, and she wrote yeah. comedy, and I just didn't... It was kind of like a paradigm shifter because I really just... I think I knew that funny women existed, and right. I knew that women with, like, families or... Um, I don't know, just sort of normal uh, social relationships existed, but I didn't know like that those could be in the same person. You can't crossbreed the two. No. <laughs> um, so it really, you know, it really excited me. Like, yeah, because I knew I had those impulses, but I kind of didn't take them seriously. Like, well, right. I mean, it's like I can't do anything with it. I didn't make my friends allowed at a party, but right, right. Um, but I certainly can't get yeah. paid to be this way. So how do you think that your comedy plays into doing a movie like this, or do you not do you not think of them as two separate things, or you know, is it just I'm an actor and sometimes I'm stepping into a comedy role and sometimes I'm stepping into a dramatic role? Um, it's I'm not sure. I mean, there I feel like really when you break it down, they're no different. Right. But they are. I mean, I feel like it's more about like size. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like with comedy, sometimes it tends to be broader, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and maybe that's just me, but um, I feel like with drama, I just kind of have to take it down a notch or two. Yeah. Do um, you sometimes find that when you audition for stuff, people are asking you to kind of bring it down a notch in general? Is that something you've had to combat? Because I know something lot. I have to no. combat. <laughs> I do. I really have to watch myself. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, I remember showing up for a shoot where I had never met the director, he just cast me from a videotape, mm -hmm. and, and I did my first take having never met the guy. Right. You know, and he came over and he was British and he was going, right, um, could you just, <laughs> uh, maybe just a bit, you know? Yeah. I was like, oh my god, that's so embarrassing. But he was right, you know? Yeah. And it's hard to know if you haven't been on set the whole time what the tone is. Right, and, absolutely. Um, so I was glad he said something, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, um, with the drama stuff, I mean, that's something that's been really nice that... I feel like earlier in my career mm -hmm. acting, I didn't feel comfortable. I got really nervous doing anything that wasn't comedic mm -hmm. because it it had this sort of um, unspoken agreement that you're taking yourself seriously when you do right, drama. Right, right. And I always just feel like, cut it out. Get yeah. it out. You're not really a queen. Cut <laughs> it out. You know, when it's like if you're doing a comedic sketch or something about a queen, then it's like, fine. Yeah. It's like I'm making fun of myself. I'm laughing right, at myself absolutely. or I'm laughing at queens or whatever. Um, but so that's been something really great. I think about when you're talking about have you been confident all mm -hmm. along, or has it grown? And mm -hmm. I feel like more and more these days, um, I don't feel like there's any difference really when I step out to do something comedic or something dramatic. I take mm -hmm. I do take myself seriously. Yeah, and uh, and that's okay. Yeah, you know. And I I think I used to always feel like if I stepped on stage or in front of a camera, I had to make somebody laugh. Mm -hmm. In other words. Who do you think you are? Right. Well, Why am I going to watch you for an hour if you're not yeah. going to make me laugh? Like, who gives a shit? It's kind of a defense mechanism, too. Yeah. Right? That, that's where you feel comfortable. That's your safe zone. Because that's right. where you have power is in making people yeah. laugh. Yeah. And so I think it, it, it says a lot for your self-esteem when you sort of step on a stage and say, like, no, I think you'll be interested, actually. Yeah. Even if there's no punchline. Absolutely. And that's, that's a big deal. You know, I remember the first time doing that and being like, 
think this is scary to be on stage and not try and please somebody. Right. And that's a huge, that's like taking off a straight jacket. Yeah. yeah. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to be your like dancing monkey. And, right. You know, and that's all right. Like some, sometimes that's really fun. Yeah. You know, to be the dancing monkey. Yeah. Sometimes dancing monkey is real, real fun. So if, if there are, let's say, young women out there who are thinking like, I really would love to do comedy. I would love to, you know, what what's your advice for somebody that just... Yeah, sees Reno 911 and says like, man, that looks P.S. like a real lot of fun. You yeah, know, yeah. how how do I even get the confidence to, you know, yeah. you, you wrote sketch and you mm -hmm. did improv. Is that what you did? You started taking improv yeah. classes? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was originally like a Broadway sort of musical theater. Like I wanted to be on Broadway singing music. Yeah. And I remember I just didn't feel like I fit in. And so I really took a sharp left and took an improv class. and. Then uh, you know, developed it into it was uh, Gotham City Improv in New York, which is originally the sister school of the Groundlings, um, and then they parted ways. But it was excellent training ground, mm -hmm. really social. It gave you an, uh, an instant sort of support network, so you weren't sort of going through it alone. Right. It was very social, very fun, um, and uh, and it was great training. And like even if you, you know, it's something that can be applied to dramatic roles or commercial auditions or anything mm -hmm. improv, you know. Um, public speaking. I mean, yeah. It, oh, yeah. You know, and uh, when you get stopped for a traffic ticket, I mean, improv right. is a great, you know. But um, so I took an improv class, a sketch class, and um, you know, just formed little sketch groups with friends and wrote little one-woman shows, and um, and a lot of good stuff came out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and my main advice would be to just perform as much as possible, anywhere, everywhere, get in front of people. Um, and I feel like, especially now, when internet. Um, you know, posting funny videos and stuff is mm -hmm. so easy and it's great, yeah. but it cannot replace the um, the the stuff you learn from performing live in front of people where you cannot stop and edit. Right. You know, um, and uh, there's there's no training like that. And I would say, you know, if you're really trying to make it, um, go on auditions that you don't care about. Like go on auditions that you don't even want to get just to practice going on auditions mm -hmm. because that's a totally separate skill set yeah, oh, from absolutely. actually performing in a show with costumes and lights and right. this. Right. Really yeah, the audition is actually like 90% of the work. Right. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. right. It's like you could be a brilliant um, student but not test well. Right. And it's sort of the same. You can be a brilliant actress and not audition well. Absolutely. Um, because the whole thing is about judging you. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. But So the more you do it, and I think you just get accustomed to like... It's no like in other words, you want the same comfort factor in an audition room that you have sitting at your living room sofa right. watching TV, so that you're not like some different person who's sort of, hey, hey yeah. it's nice to meet you. Hey, my name. Is and Mary. I think it all comes back too to the idea of doing it yourself and making it happen and getting out there, so that you're not sitting at home waiting for the phone to ring. You're putting together your yeah. own shows. You're you're you know writing your own sketch shows and really creating work for yourself, so that you get the experience and the practice. Yeah. You know, so that when you do get into the big leagues, you already know what you're doing. You're not having to work it out on set yeah. or whatever. And, you know. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's worth it. And um, and so much more rewarding, I think, too, to do your own work and to produce yeah. your own work. Yeah, and then the other the other thing I like to say a lot is is just in general to help um, people who are starting out or whatever is to just get a life, basically. Like, mm -hmm. Really, I think it's so important to develop interests outside of the entertainment industry, yeah. outside of showbiz, outside of performing, outside of writing. Like, I, I was telling you earlier, I have a weird obsession with archaeology. And the reason I love it is because I can, you know, watch a documentary about it or read about it and not be thinking in the back of my head, why was my cast in that role? <laughs> I wanted to go on that dig in Israel. <laughs> I was just as good as him, you know.